In this episode of Microcast, I'll show you how to configure the serial port on your Raspberry Pi so that you can use the serial communication protocol in your projects. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, computers used to have one of these guys on the back. A serial port. We mostly use them for joysticks, dial-up modems, and perhaps very old-school mice. But when the USB protocol came out in the late 90s, it was the beginning of the end for the serial port, and nowadays most new computers don't even have one. So why is there one on the Pi? Well, it turns out that a lot of hardware devices still use the serial protocol to talk to each other. Things like magnetic card readers, RFID sensors, and even GPS modules. In fact, the Raspberry Pi, by default in the Raspbian distribution, transmits the boot sequence via the serial transmit pin. This allows you to display the boot sequence on something like a small serial display instead of a monitor. Now before we move on, I just want to mention briefly that you may also hear people call the serial port a UART. UART stands for Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter and is really just a fancy way of referring to the serial port. It's also a great way to sound like you know what you're talking about. So now you know. Here you can see I have a small display showing the boot up sequence of the Raspberry Pi. Since this display has a serial port, all I needed to do was connect power and ground and then connect the Raspberry Pi serial transmit pin to the display's receive pin. That's pretty cool and all, but that default behavior actually prevents us from using the serial port in our projects. Let me show you what I mean. This is a very simple Python script I wrote that interfaces with an RFID module from ID Innovations. It can detect and read the unique ID of compatible RFID tags. When it reads a tag, the default behavior of the module is to spit out the unique ID of the tag on the module's serial transmit pin. This program simply waits for tags to be scanned and prints out the unique ID in the console. So watch what happens when we run it. You'll see that our program crashes unexpectedly after reading only a few tags. Now let me show you how we can fix this so that we can actually use the serial port in our projects. All we have to do is make a quick change in a couple of files. You'll want to use sudo when you open nano to edit these files. We'll do sudo nano boot and it's called commandline.txt. Now this file contains the parameters passed to the kernel at initialization time. We need to remove this part right here that sets console equal to TTY AMA0. That TTY part is how the operating system refers to our serial port. Now my file doesn't have it, but sometimes right after this console equals TTY AMA0, you'll have something like KGD BOC equals also referring to TTY AMA0. You'll need to remove both. Since mine only has the one, I'll go ahead and remove that. Leave everything else alone in this file. You don't want to mess with any of these other settings. I'll go ahead and hit Control X and save it. That's the first one. The other file we need to modify is slash etc init tab. When we open this file, what we'll want to do is scroll all the way down to the bottom. Now a tip in nano is if you do alt m forward slash, it'll take you all the way to the end of the document. So down here at the very bottom, you'll see this comment that says spawn a Getty on Raspberry Pi serial line. We're just going to comment the line after that out, which is what sets that Getty up. Now, you can look up what a Getty is, but basically it's a program that handles connections to serial terminals, in this case, over our serial port lines. So by commenting it out, we free up those lines to use in our programs. We'll exit and save. Now that we've made those changes, we just need to reboot our Pi so they can take effect. 
Now that we're booted back up, let's go ahead and try and run our program again. You'll notice this time it runs without any problems and we can just keep scanning tags without any crashes. Okay, so to review, the serial port on the Raspberry Pi is configured in Raspbian by default to output the boot sequence and is tied up by a Getty so it can't be reliably used in your hardware projects. You'll get mixed results if you do. To free it up for use in your projects, all you need to do is make a couple of minor changes in commandline.txt and init tab and reboot. That's it for this episode of Microcasts. If you have any questions, please send me an email or find me on Twitter. Till next time, happy hacking.